This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Recently, Microsoft announced an update to their Surface Pro X, their ARM-based Windows 2-in-1 computer. In my initial review last year, I gave it an incomplete grade. So today, we're gonna take a look again and see how many of those holes have been plugged. Hello, my name is Brad and I review tech for creative professionals. And when I take a look at a nice piece of hardware like the Surface Pro X, I'm taking a look at it from the point of view of designers and illustrators. And from a distance, this looks like it could be a killer art machine. It's a two-in-one laptop with a touch screen. The kickstand lets you set it at almost any angle, making it ideal for drawing. You can get a keyboard cover, you can get a pen, two more pluses for the kind of work that I do. And in general, like I covered in my original review, the hardware here is great. Okay then, why the incomplete grade? Well, it comes down to the processor. There is an ARM chip inside of this. This is what Microsoft is using as the brains of this computer. For decades, Windows has run on the x86 architecture, like Intel or AMD chipsets. ARM processors are more like what you find in phones and tablets. They tend to need less power, that saves on battery life, meaning you can run it cooler, meaning you can make it thinner and lighter and more portable. And as these processors have gotten more and more capable over the years, laptop manufacturers have taken a look and thought, hmm, I bet I could make a pretty cool computer with that. And so that is exactly what Microsoft is doing here. And it's not that much different than what Apple is doing by moving to their own silicon. But there is a catch. There's always a catch. ARM processors are a completely different architecture from x86. Our old school Windows software that we've been using for years does not natively run on these computers. What you need to do is recompile, or in some cases, rewrite your software in order to make it work on these new computers. Ugh, yeah, that's the problem. And the reason why I gave the Surface Pro X an incomplete grade last year. The software that I use most frequently just wasn't ready yet. Microsoft, however, has been working on Windows itself to run on ARM for years. They have also put a lot of work into their own software, the Edge browser, the entire Office suite, lots and lots of other stuff that they make. But many other apps, especially non-Microsoft apps that worked on the Surface Pro X, tend to work through emulation. So last year, only 32-bit apps worked in emulator mode. But one thing that has changed in recent months is Microsoft has announced that they're working to emulate 64-bit apps as well. This is great news. Basically, this means that any Windows app at all will run on a Windows device like the Surface Pro X in the future. But again, there is a catch, and that catch here is performance. Emulated software doesn't run as fast as software that's compiled specifically for ARM processors. Whew, so that is a big long description as to why the Surface Pro X last year got an incomplete grade. Not gonna talk so much in this video about the hardware because I thought the hardware was great. You could check out last year's view, pulling it off the shelf for the first time in months. I thought, wow, this feels wonderful. This looks wonderful. But what I really wanted to check out in this video are those apps, specifically the art and drawing apps that I use on a daily basis. But before I do that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Professional websites, online stores, portfolios. It's even easy to claim your own domain and URL. Create a custom site that matches your style, bring your ideas to life. I took it for a spin. I built my portfolio with it. And as a web designer back in the day, it would have taken me a week or two to do what I was able to do in an evening using Squarespace. If you're showing off your work to potential clients or trying to land a full-time job, those templates look really professional. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. First off, let's take a look at some of the art and design software out there that runs really well already natively on the Surface Pro X. The first one that I want to talk about here is a little painting app called Leonardo. I'm starting out with this one because it just barely missed the cutoff last year for my review. At the time, the devs were working hard to get an ARM version ready and get this app out the door and it just missed me. But this is a great streamlined little art app that has a lot of fun things going on here and is generally just a very enjoyable sketching experience. There are all the art tools that you come to expect from a traditional drawing app like this. It's currently about 40 bucks on the Microsoft Store. By default, it has an infinite canvas. What does that mean? That means that the canvas has no edges. So if you draw or sketch or come up with an idea and you wanna iterate on that idea, 
What do you do? Take two fingers, pan over, start drawing again. Finish that idea, pan over, start drawing again. The canvas never ends. But wait, what if I want my canvas to end so I could export it as an image to post online or print out? You could do that too, but by default, the canvas is infinite. One benefit that this app has over many other Windows drawing apps out there is that it's really lightweight. It's built for a native touch environment, tablets like this. If you have ever used an iPad or an Android tablet to draw before, you know what it's like to just pinch and zoom seamlessly, smoothly. That's something that you don't get in many desktop apps or many Windows apps in general, but here you do because it's designed to work that way from the ground up. Let's take a look at another app. This one is called Concepts. It also has an infinite canvas. It has a pretty cool interface. It's centered around this circle in the upper left-hand corner here. It's also known as the app with the coolest color picker of all time. I do kind of prefer the old school color picker to just grabbing predefined Pantone colors, but still, you gotta admit, it is fun to open and close this over and over and over again. Like Leonardo, this is a newer app that has been designed with touch screens in mind from the beginning, so it does take advantage of the same pinching and zooming and hand gestures that really speed up your workflow and make drawing on a tablet like this so much fun. Another thing that you run into on devices like the Surface Pro is often you'll just take the keyboard and fold it under so you don't have have access to the keyboard shortcuts that you rely on for so many Windows apps. And these apps that are designed for touch screens in general tend to perform so much better without having those keyboard shortcuts available to you. Which of course brings me to our third app on this list. This is Sketchable. This is one of my old standbys. Sketchable is just fun for sketching. When I go into a new Windows computer, this is usually the app I start with, the first app I install, because it's very small and very easy to install and just draw on and see how the pen performs. It has a lot of benefits that the other apps that I've mentioned on this list have, with the smooth gestures being designed for a touch screen. And of course, it has most of the tools you would expect in a fully featured art app. It is designed around like the sketchbook concept. So you define the size of your sketchbook and then you draw on it that way instead of defining each canvas individually. You can create as many sketchbooks as you want and you can make them whatever size you want, but that, that's generally how the program is structured. So if you want to get a Surface Pro X specifically for drawing, those would be the three apps that I would look at first because they run natively on R. Now, there are some other apps out there that do run but they're being emulated, which means they're not gonna run as well as they would say on an Intel or AMD based machine. The gorilla in the room here is Adobe. So let's start with their apps. Several apps in the creative suite do run here, but they are older versions of the software. You get the 2019 version of Adobe Illustrator and the 2018 version of Adobe Photoshop. Since they are running in emulation mode, they are very laggy. Photoshop is extremely laggy and I'm just being totally honest here it is not fun to use it is it is painful if you're in a pinch and you need to use these apps it will work however if it's a major part of your workflow I would not look at the Surface Pro X for these it's also worth mentioning that Adobe Animate and Adobe Fresco are also not on this list they're just not available for download or use on the Surface Pro X. So this is the part I have this whole rant written here. I'm gonna spare you all and just say this. I'm I'm pretty disappointed that Adobe has chosen not to support ARM yet. I'm sure that there's way more work in this than I will ever know to get all of this software ready, but they were on stage with Microsoft last year demoing Adobe Fresco running natively on the Surface Pro X and promising ARM support for their software. People make purchasing decisions based on those kind of promises. So when they don't come through, that's just, you know, it's not cool. Next app I wanna take a look at is Clip Studio. I almost threw Clip Studio into the first category because even though it's a 32-bit Windows app running through emulation, it runs really, really well. I can feel that there is slightly more lag than there is when I'm used to using it. Like when I go to pinch and zoom or move around the canvas, there's just that slight hesitation before it goes. But drawing with the pens is really smooth. There, there's not a ton of lag on those pens and overall it works really well. So I wouldn't say, hey, get a Surface Pro X if you wanna use Clip Studio Paint. I wouldn't say that, but I would say, you know, in a pinch, 
if you want to use it, it does work here. Uh, but I think there's probably some better computer options out there if that is your primary painting tool. All right, so the last app that I want to talk about, really popular open source app, Krita. It is free if you don't get it from the Microsoft App Store, but I'll actually go to krita.org. You could download it free there. But I'd say if you're on the Surface Pro X, I wouldn't really bother. This is one that just didn't make the conversion particularly well. I believe it's because Krita relies on something called the WinTab driver to properly control like brush pressure on tablets like this. And this is something you run into over and over on ARM. I'm gonna talk about it in a minute here, is that the drivers that you depend on and the little itty bitty things that you depend on for Windows just aren't here. And the WinTab driver, that you need for Krita is one of those things. Now there are dozens and dozens and dozens of painting apps out there. I'm just covering the most popular ones. Those are the ones that I would either recommend or I just wanted to highlight because they don't work particularly well. But I will say this, things have gotten better in the last year, but not, not a ton. You're still probably gonna be better off going with like an Intel-based Windows device right now. I think Microsoft is dedicated to getting more of these ARM devices out there. They updated the Pros X processor just a few weeks ago, and then they did announce that 64-bit support is coming. Apple's going through a similar transition with their new chips. Of course, the big difference here is Apple can say my way or the highway because nobody else is making Mac OS laptops, whereas Microsoft doesn't have quite as much leverage, but they're still gonna try to get the developers on board to support these ARM-based computers going forward. But I think what's going on here, for the average consumer, this computer is gonna do 95% of the things that you want it to do. But what I find when I'm using a computer like this on a daily basis, what ends up happening is someone sends you a file you can't open and you're stuck. Or maybe it's a like a web meeting that needs some kind of proprietary plugin that doesn't work on ARM. Maybe your kid just wants to load up a whole bunch of mods in Minecraft. That ain't gonna fly here. What makes Windows so powerful and so dang useful is how incredibly customizable it is. When I get in a Windows computer to review, I spend a good chunk of time installing all sorts of little drivers and features that really make my computer feel like it's my computer to make my workflow better. You've probably seen me do things like hit the space bar to preview an image or a movie or have like a little on-screen controller. So if I'm drawing in Photoshop, I have like a little undo button there or a shift key or something like that. And Windows has so many of those cool little applications that really make your computer shine. But unfortunately here, most of those just don't work and may never work. And at the end of the day, it takes away Windows greatest superpower. I guess if you're just running vanilla windows with the office suite checking email consuming media it's great for that but at the same time so is an ipad so is an android tablet so at the end of the day i feel that this device is making too many compromises compromises on the software side of things and also compromises on the pen side of things as well I didn't talk about the pen in this the way I did in my review, but the pen has a lot of wobble and jitter to it, so it's not the best drawing experience. But I'm still really glad that Microsoft is doing this and pushing ARM so hard because I think it gives us the opportunity to see some really creative Windows computers in the future and gives manufacturers so much more flexibility in what they could do. So I'm hoping for this one. I really want it to work. I really want this stuff to push forward to see what kind of form factors we can get in computers going forward. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.